Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because when you're on a team and you work in sort of a team environment, when, you, when you're on the U.S. team and you're dealing with all the different attitudes and personalities and you're all working with each other to try to get up on that podium and get each other up there, um, it almost feels like that also applies to the restaurant business. You're in a team. I mean, that's one of the first jobs I had was working at a restaurant in Aspen. And so you learn quickly, even if you're the dish boy or you're the, the water person, you're a team and you're helping people out. The more you help your waiter, you get tipped and, and goes down the line and it's sort of a team effort and you really get to feel that. And I, it's interesting because as our society gets detached and steps away from the physical, I feel like that's a part that's really important is sort of that knowing how to work together with folks, you know? Oh, abso absolutely. And that's, Chris and I had completely different experiences on, on the U.S. team. Like oh. her, she really had an amazing uh, team, the chemistry, coaches, it was great. Ours was different, right? I mean, yeah. we had, uh, you know, two incredibly talented guys that were older than us and better. And, and it just was, it just didn't gel. And the right. coaching staff didn't bring it together. And for me coming out of, you know, my best coaches were were with the Aspen Ski Club. I'd always, when I came back from Europe, I'd get myself kind of dialed back in with those guys. They helped me, right. you know, they knew my skiing, they they knew my head, get me back technically. Coach D, Pete DiGregorio, yeah. was to this day, one of the most unbelievable coaches, uh, happened to be football, but what he taught me yeah, uh, you know, in, in football and in life, I applied. That's, that's exactly what I mean by how you could learn one thing from someone and apply it somewhere else. And it's it's amazing to me how each one of these teachers taught us all different things, you know. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I wasn't even, I mean, I entered high school, I wasn't even five feet. I was definitely the shortest kid in high school. And I may still always be <laughs> that record. I may have that record. And um, I don't know. I was I was four feet eleven as a freshman. Oh really? Okay. Pounds. Okay, yeah. we're close. Okay, we were close. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember Coach D was telling me he was trying to get me on the football team, but those guys were so huge. And I finally got into. I started to do karate, thinking that would help get me my confidence and all that stuff. And I realized, man, karate is just like, it's a way of life. It's going to take a long time to do. This isn't something that you're just going to notice in a, you know, a few months. And Coach D, I signed up for his weightlifting class. So I was in there with all these football dudes. And here I am, this scrawny little kid, practice, you know, lifting weights and doing stuff. And <laughs> literally within like two weeks, I just, all of a sudden, you, I know, I mean, my, just my body was built for all of a sudden lifting weights. It and worked. You could totally see the difference. And so by the time my first year of working out it was like, I went, I mean, I literally was, I got to the point where this little kid was benching over 300 pounds. You know? <laughs> That's right. So, I think you responded well to it. So yeah, so Coach D was kind of important in my life too. And I would say with that, not only that, but it also gave me, I could see my body. I could know that if I ate well, I could see how things would go. And so it started, it was also a training into health and my body and thinking about myself as a machine and what you put in and what you get out, you know? And when you're a professional racer, you're doing that times the gazillion, you know, way, way more than I was, you know? Yeah, no, he taught you how to think, you know, just like the teachers, you know, he taught, he was also, a, you know, physical education, but a, but a broader on how you approach the sport, you know, and, and uh, yeah, I love football. He was great. Uh, he taught me so much. I had a couple of scholarships. I was going to go on a couple of schools and play college football. I just loved it. I mean, he was just so good. And and I think what was for me, when you have good coaches like that, and then you go into another environment where you don't have it, it's just so glaring to me. Yeah. I And so that's what was so cool for Chris and I getting in the restaurant business is we could take both of those things. And I think that's what we, we our culture is so the team culture is critical to the success of our business and it's it's all like you said you know if if we are high five and the dishwashers they're the ones that i mean right if you go down the restaurant goes down okay she, executive chef is awesome right but you the dishwasher is equally as important it's we're all the same here and we, we you know we well you we, know it's, it's it's interesting because my wife and i are the same only we do animation and it's we have a team of animators and different sorts that we bring in and work with and it's the same thing and if you don't do that the work suffers 
it's yeah. it is how you if you pull your team together you make an incredible stuff you know what i mean whether it's restaurant and food or whether it's an animated commercial or a spot that energy has to be there in order to make rise it up you know what i mean you can take yeah. a great chef and make him even better you know by doing that yeah no and it's that and that's that's what's the most that's the fun of it right it's the most yeah. gratifying everybody gets in it equally we we suffer through it together so we can celebrate you know together at that same level well it's also it, it it's it also changes the dynamic of what family is you know we always think of family as blood you know sisters brothers aunts uncles physical blood but the truth is we create a family with all kinds of people we have our own little family network and in a way they're almost as important as our physical family in our well-being and stuff like that you know um I don't know what it's like in your restaurant, but one, I'll bet you once in a while you sit down there and you have a little beer and you're sitting there talking to everybody there and you're just talking about life and things, yeah. you know? And it, to me, it feels like if you don't have that where you work, then you have a problem. You know what I mean? That's, to me, I feel like that's an important part of life is trying to create that around you. Well, you look at, look at how much time you spend at work, right? I mean, we have these conversations a lot because we have uh, a lot of partners and we have 12 salaried managers, all that have migrated up and now have their own kids. So it is a big family, but we talk about that, you know, is, is you know, a lot of them you say, hey, we spend more time with each other than we do with our families a lot of times, you know, you're there from morning till eight. Yeah. And so you, you have that that same, you know, kind of dynamic with, with, with each other. Uh -huh. And you know, whatever, it's not just business, whatever that is happening with each other. I mean, we're kind of all, we're there for each other. Right. Cool. Cool.